Hey guys, Bill here with another ranked list, this time for Star Fox Zero on the Wii U, a highly underappreciated game that definitely isn't as good as Star Fox 64, but it does have some great moments among the bad. Hopefully, this list will highlight those aspects for any of you who may have dismissed the game. Before I get started, let's take a look at the list of levels in the game. Notice there are 12 levels with green icons and 8 with blue icons. The blue ones are extremely short mini asides as a result of taking an alternate path in one of the main 12 green levels. They contain almost no story element and little pertinent dialogue between characters and the majority of them are lazy design. This is Star Fox Zero's biggest fault so all 8 of these levels are going to be at the bottom of the list with maybe one or two exceptions. It's really upsetting that Platinum Games didn't just design 8 more full length levels instead. With that said, let's get started from worst to best. Number 20 goes to the Asteroid Field. This level is disgusting for every Star Fox fan out there. It plays a great rendition of the Meteo song that has been a staple since Star Fox 64, getting you all excited for an excellent on-rails mission, but all you do is shoot asteroids while Rob complains every two seconds that the Great Fox has taken damage. Then, stupid vacuum cleaner drones latch onto the Great Fox and a few fighters join in, and when all the drones are dead, the level's over. It's like all the worst elements of Sector Z from Star Fox 64 made even worse. The only redeeming factor is the music. Number 19, which really should be tied for last place, is the level called Great Fox. Platinum Games gave up trying here, creating a disgusting copy of the Asteroid Field level. That's right, you do the exact same stuff. Shoot asteroids and vacuum cleaner drones while Rob complains every two seconds and there's no more Meteo music to offset the total crap that this level is. The only slight redeeming factor is this level includes a boss that you have to lure in front of the Great Fox, at which point Rob blasts it in a visually pleasing manner. But the boss is just a reused model from one of the better levels painted red. Again, it's just pure lazy crap design. Number 18 goes to the level called Wolfen. This is a 1 vs 2 battle against Pigma and Andrew of Star Wolf, which is cool, but it shouldn't count as a full level. Pigma and Andrew both get superpowers once their health is knocked down to half, which is a really weird design choice, but I guess it kinda makes sense as the R-Wings of the Star Fox team come equipped with smart bombs. Maybe if I was 6 years old and didn't know better, I'd replay this mission over and over again, but it just isn't exciting enough to even matter. Number 17 goes to the level called Hunter. This is a one-on-one -on -one dogfight against Wolf, who also gets a superpower at half health. His power, the Lightning Tornado, is extremely ridiculous, as his ship turns pink and spirals at you at crazy speeds. At least Pigma and Andrew had bombs that kinda made sense getting fired from their ships. But Wolf suddenly combines Street Fighter with Star Fox, and that just doesn't work well to me. But a replayable dogfight of Fox vs. Wolf is a cool idea. It's just, again, not a substitute for a full level, and the lack of anything else interesting puts it near the bottom of the list. Number 16 goes to Satellite Mission 2, also known as Zonus in the R-Wing. I wanted this level to make up for the main story's Zonus mission, but it just makes a mostly bad level slightly more tolerable in that it's over with faster. However, all the character dialogue from the main mission is removed for this satellite mission, and killing enemies doesn't even matter at all as the only thing that you're scored on is your time. So it's just another lazy, lifeless shell to fill the spot of what could have been an awesome reimagining of an on-rails Zonus level similar to that of Star Fox 64. Number 15 goes to Salvadora. This level gets huge brownie points for being able to play as Peppy, and his ridiculous shouting of barrel roll every single time you do a barrel roll cracked me up when I first encountered it. It made me wish Slippy and Falco got mini levels as well, but again, a good laugh isn't enough to call a two minute level where all you do is destroy gun turrets great. Number 14 goes to Aqua Rosa. It's really stupid how a boss fight is considered a full level, but it is a good boss fight. That is, until you know what you're doing. The first time, it's super challenging, and it looks great, and it's fun to just keep at it until you get it. But once you get it, it just makes you say, why is this considered a full level and not just an alternate phase to the first level? Number 13 actually goes to one of the main missions, and that one is Zonus. I can appreciate why Nintendo and Platinum Games decided to create the Gyro Wing vehicle and make a stealth mission, but it brings the action to a halt for very little reward. 
A mission with all four Star Fox members on foot would have been so much cooler if they were going to try to do something different to break up the action. Aquas from Star Fox 64 tried to introduce a third vehicle as well, and the end result was the worst level in the game. The Gyro Wing does the same exact thing here. Cat Monroe is the only life that this level has, and it's just upsetting when compared to Zonus from Star Fox 64. Number 12 goes to another main mission, Sector Gamma. This is a reskinned Sector Z, but in its defense, it's at least better than Sector Z. Fighters are constantly flying around, but the main threat is three large missiles heading for a teleporter. The missiles have three sections that must get destroyed, and they accelerate any time a section breaks off, creating a pretty tough challenge on a first playthrough. Unfortunately, the level has those stupid vacuum drones again harassing the Great Fox, because, you know, everybody always loves these Protect the Great Fox missions. The explosions are nice here though, and there's good banter between the Star Fox team members throughout the whole level. Number 11 goes to the final mini mission, Satellite Mission Number 1. This level is fantastic, but it's less than 3 minutes long. You chase Andrew throughout Area 3's space colony, but there are tons of enemies the whole way, which is the whole fun of Star Fox. See how many enemies you can shoot down and score bonus hits off of before they leave the screen. And the more frantic it is, the better. And this level is frantic. It's all tight quarters and fast scrolling, forcing you to be quick with your shots if you want a high score. But, just as things start to get the most exciting, the level's over. Okay, let's take a look at that scoreless screen again. Maybe I was too harsh on those eight blue levels, and we aren't even meant to view them as real levels, and are only supposed to look at them as bonus missions. Therefore, meaning Star Fox Zero only really has 12 levels. But if that's the case, we all have reason to be mad here, because Star Fox 64 gave us 16 full-length, diverse levels. You're telling me the Wii U didn't have enough memory space for at least that? Anyway, the eight bonus missions, Zonus and Sector Gamma, are out of the way, so now we get to actually talk about the real levels of Star Fox Zero. Number 10 goes to Area 3. This level has two really cool sections and one bad one. You open up in a typical space battle where you have to take down 30 fighters as fast as you can for a medal, but of course you can take out more if you want to. At that 30 kill mark, Pigma appears, who is way easier than in that mini mission where he's with Andrew. Phase 2 puts the whole team inside the colony in walker mode, where you must stop Andros's army from stealing the Gigarilla, which is that giant Shogun Megazord thing. You can end the mission really fast by flying up to the tower and turning on the power, skipping the last good section of the level, but also half skipping the worst section. If you follow the level as you're supposed to though, you go down this twisted hangar and have to maneuver around enemies and obstacles, switching back and forth from the R-Wing to the walker, and it's just freaking awesome. But then you get put in the Gyro Wing, and the rest of the level sucks. And then you go to Gyro Wing Zonus. So, in other words, squeeze every bit of joy out of that last hangar section you can before the game comes to a screeching halt. Number 9 goes to Venom. Here you are forced to watch a long dialogue scene with General Pepper, which is only skippable if chosen from the main game map screen or the score menu. After the scene, you simply deactivate a force field via a panel, then fight the entire Star Wolf team alone. It sounds hard, but they're actually very easy and can be beaten pretty easily by just rolling around on the ground in walker mode like a nutcase and firing like nuts. Next is a really cool approach to Andros, where the ghost of James McCloud makes an appearance. The Andros fight is pretty cool, but I personally don't think the overall feeling quite matches that of Star Fox 64's final moments. The final escape sequence isn't as fun either, but the last words of James McCloud followed by the escape cinematic is pretty damn cool if you're a fan from the N64 you days. You have to make it back to your friends, Fox. Strong, Fox. Number 8 goes to Sector Omega. This level is awesome at first, but it's over so fast with the exception of a long boss fight. You go top speed, as Fox says, faster than any Star Fox level ever, and it feels similar to the Death Star Trench Run from the Rogue Squadron games in a way. It's really awesome, and there are a few nice formations of enemies to rack up big hits. 
There's also a slight nod to Venom from Star Fox 64, where Slippy and Falco take one side of a branching pathway, and you get to choose if you want to go with them or go down your own path. It's definitely not as fun as that Venom, though, as the swarms of enemies aren't present. It's still enough to be fun, though, and that final section before the boss is a challenge for your reaction time. The boss fight is cool in that it plays the same boss music from Star Fox 64, and it's the same attack carrier that has been around since the very first Star Fox game. But he's been updated so much that the fight drags on for too long. It's cool that you can destroy the arm cannon things the old-fashioned way when they open up, or you can destroy the piece that attaches them to the central unit for extra hit bonuses. But the final phase with the lasers is just annoying and not really that fun. Number 7 goes to Sector Alpha. This level is pretty straightforward and reminds me a lot of Sector Y from Star Fox 64. It's an on-rails mission into a space armada with lots of enemy formations to try and kill before they fly off the screen. The biggest challenge is killing the red battleships before they fire at the Cornarian battleships. You need to boost or use bombs to do so, and if you manage to get the first three before they fire, you earn one of the level's medals. I would say that the whole first phase is more fun than Sector Y from Star Fox 64. Phase 2 puts you in the walker inside the boss battleship. You run through a cool hallway and hover up some platforms and in between laser walls as you fight your way to the core. The boss isn't anything special, but the overall feeling of storming inside to take it out is awesome. Number 6 goes to Sector Beta. This level is pure fan service, bringing back Bill Gray of the Cornarian Army and Cat Monroe, both from Star Fox 64. You must take out more of those red battleships, but this time it's in all range mode, and there are other fighters flying around as well. After four ships are destroyed, the main one appears, and Slippy, Peppy, and Falco all form up at your wing, which is a really awesome touch, even if they don't do anything but mimic your movements one to one. The boss battleship puts up a shield, preventing the Cornarian fleet from blasting it, and it starts taking shots. You have to sneak into the hole that the enemy lasers create, work your way to the back and destroy the shield generator. The whole thing feels awesome, and if you take a long time, you get to hear some funny enemy voices that remind me of the Macbeth train boss from Star Fox 64. But that's not all. Once the thing is destroyed, which looks awesome by the way, Cat joins the battle as well as Star Wolf. And for once, your teammates are actually sort of useful. They shoot the Star Wolf team pretty frequently, but the damage done is very minimal. It's still basically all up to you, but the animations and sounds are nice. This level is definitely one of the good ones. Alright, time for the top 5, and man this was hard to decide on because these remaining 5 levels are all really awesome. 5th place goes to Ficina. This level looks fantastic, especially out on the horizon where you can see other planets in the distance. You start out in the R-Wing in a classic all-range mode cleanup mission, and man, Star Fox Zero gets this right. It feels so good blowing up enemy ships, especially if you shake one off your tail, which happens often. There's good banter between the Star Fox team, and it's just a lot of fun. Once the kill quota is met, Leon of Star Wolf appears, which is a nice touch. This level is basically a lot like Fortuna from Star Fox 64 in that respect. Phase 2 spawns enemy drones on the ground, and you get put in the Landmaster, equipped with its new function, the Grav Master. The tank can fly, and for a really long time, surprisingly. This section is a lot of fun, and not only are there ground enemies, but some airborne fighters still exist as well, and this is the first all-range mode Landmaster level in Star Fox history. Plus, the Landmaster can lock onto three enemies at once, and it's more fun than ever to control. Finally, the boss appears, and it's this giant mechanical spider thing that you must attack in a similar fashion to the Aperoid boss on Planet Katina in Star Fox's Soul. You have to take out three of the legs, then fly on top and destroy the nodes protecting the center weak point, and then of course unload all you've got on that center dome. It's tons of fun and one of the better bosses in the game. Fourth and third place are tied, and they go to the two Corneria missions. Let's start with Corneria 1. You burn through the planet's atmosphere and fly in over the water as the music kicks in, and it's frickin' awesome! Immediately, squadrons of fighters start forming up for you to rack up hits and combos, and it feels exactly how Star Fox should. Once inside the city, it's old school weaving in between buildings and under overpasses to spawn hidden enemy squads, and again, it's frickin' awesome! The water sections look fantastic, and I really love the section before the branching pathway where enemies appear above and inside the tunnels. The alternate path is similar to Star Fox 64, except the boss is in the next level, so technically there's no boss that way. 
The normal pathway, though, takes you through one last watery stretch and to General Pepper's Tower, where you must take out 10 fighters in all range mode. It's a small number, but it's still fun. Then the containers open and spawn ground drones, which really test your abilities with the motion controls, but in a good way, because once you get the feel for it, it's fun. Piloting the R-Wing is just super responsive and fluid. Finally, Androsa appears, and it is a visually pleasing fight with two possible outcomes. Overall, Corneria 1 is an extraordinary introduction to the game, and it's just a shame that most of the other levels don't offer the same dosage of excellence. Corneria 2 is a more hectic and challenging version of the same planet, this time with a nice sunset aesthetic and climactic music. The enemy formations this time are huge, netting you tons of bonus hit points, and there's a prevalence of giant saw blades that can be difficult to destroy without using bombs. The all range section now requires 30 enemies to be killed to earn a medal, and it is pretty hard to do in the time limit. Camels with laser beams attached to their freaking heads and battleships make it challenging as well. Afterwards, the Gigarilla appears, and this boss is really tough the first time around. Despite being more of a challenge, I personally like Corneria 1's boss better, so that's why I just gave third place to both versions of the planet. Whether you want classic weaving between arches or frantic waves of enemies, both are fantastic levels. Second place goes to Fortuna. This planet looks amazing and it is very challenging. Most of the reason it gets second place is because it is one of the few levels to offer a distinct planet environment, which is a very welcome and necessary break from the plethora of space levels in this game. But it goes beyond that. The planet is riddled with Venus flytraps, caterpillars and vines, as well as those memorable bugs from Zonus that screech when they die. Cat Monroe joins in at the start, and the whole time you're chasing after a giant two-headed bird that takes breaks to rain fire down on you. The highlight is the second half of Phase 1, where you enter this awesome looking tunnel and vines jut out of the walls to block you. The tunnel then dumps you out into a foggy mess of broken tree branches, and the music changes to a dramatic jungle beat while big squadrons of bug fighters come at you. The last section has you dodging all these branches just before entering the boss arena, where the Monarch Dodora from the very first Star Fox game appears. This all-range fight is intense, and the tornadoes that appear look great in addition to posing as a real challenge. It is probably the hardest boss in the game, but the theme of the level and the build-up to it is definitely a highlight moment of Star Fox Zero. And finally, the best level of Star Fox Zero goes to Titania. This level looks phenomenal, with a great sand texture that's constantly blowing under heavy winds, debris flying around everywhere in the skies, and enemies flying in from all over, even latching onto huge debris chunks that slam into the sand. You once again get put in the trusty Landmaster with its triple lock-on feature, making enemy waves a blast to take out. Best of all, there's no frame rate drop like the Titania in Star Fox 64. Toward the middle of the level, quicksand rivers with fire traps try to push you to your death, forcing you to hover and simultaneously take out incoming fighters and saw blades. Then, you're greeted by mechanical sandworms that try to grapple you into quicksand before weaving in between rocky terrain, blasting tons of waves of fighters in the process. You emerge from the mountain pass to robot camels under Lion King-shaped rocks, and a simple char shot will send the rocks crushing down on the camels. Next is a cliff with several mushroom-shaped rocks down below that you can either hover onto or transform into the Gravmaster to maneuver easier. It's up to you whether you want to stay on top or explore down below the rock formations. Either way, you'll be fighting off ground drones before coming into a giant open space where Peppy waits. Then a huge mechanical sandworm boss appears, and the entire landscape turns into quicksand which looks pretty nuts on the gamepad view. The boss is pretty straightforward, but awesome nonetheless, and the death animation is really cool, as the whole thing explodes into nothing but debris that falls to the ground. If they were able to do this with Titania, I can only imagine what a modern day Macbeth level would look like, and man it sucks that they didn't make one! Regardless, Titania is graphically awesome, a great break from the surplus of space levels, the gameplay is fantastic thanks to great controls and the ultra-responsive Landmaster, and the level design as far as enemy placement is exactly the kind of thing we like to see in an on-rails Landmaster level. So there you have it, all 20 levels ranked from worst to best, and man, if only those 8 bonus missions were real levels like Macbeth, Katina, or Solar, or even if they added a few more planetary levels that were like Corneria, Ficina, Fortuna, and Titania. Star Fox Zero would really shine if that was the case. But anyway, do you agree with my list? Feel free to comment down below, and thanks for watching!